I am honored to have visiting with us today a man who, in my opinion, is the champion of the downtrodden. When you turn the uh, television on, this man is traversing our state. All of the affected areas where Matthew came to town. You know, nobody told Matthew which way to go. <laughs> they told us that Matthew was going to make a right turn. Matthew turned on, right at the last minute, turned on his left turn signal and came inland. And we've been challenged ever since. I want you to know Upper Room, from our congregation alone, you've sent $5,000 to um, Lumberton. You've sent $7,000 to Princeton. Amen. We've gathered uh, almost $5,000 more of goods and materials that are about to be launched. Yesterday, the greater North Carolina jurisdiction unloaded thousands of dollars of goods and services. Goods to help those who have been adversely affected. We shout, we pray, we sing, but we also help our brother man, fellow man. And we're not sending our goods to church people only, to black people only, white people only, but to people. Amen. Citizens. People. People. We're not asking them whether you're legal or illegal. We just want to know, do you need help? It's an honor to present the governor of the great state of North Carolina, the one and the only Governor Pat McCurry. Would you give him an upper room reception? My, uh, my chief of staff, Thomas Stiff, said, whatever you do, please don't sing. <laughs> please sit down. Thank you all very much. <laughs> he is good. <laughs> a week and a half ago, a young man, six foot four, volunteer police chief of Princeville, North Carolina, put a rope around his chest, and his fellow firefighters tied it as tight as he, they could around his chest, as tight as they could, because they were watching their fire chief go wade into a very deep water, very dirty and dark water, in downtown Princeville to try to save a woman trapped in a car. And as they let the chief go into the water and extend the rope and hold on to the rope, they were impressed the leader of their team was the one going out in these very, very dangerous currents. And as he got to the car and reached out for the woman who was in the car and the car was about to go down, the car went down and disappeared, and the chief disappeared with the car. His fellow colleagues of the Princeville Volunteer Fire Department tried to hang on. The rope kept going and going and going under extremely dark water. The current was going extremely strong. The fire chief's wife was manning the radio back at the operations center because she's also a volunteer police, I mean, firefighter. And she heard the radio go, the chief is down, the chief is down. Can you imagine? Over a minute 
under the water, his fellow colleagues decide to tie the rope to the bumper of the fire truck. And the head of the fire truck put it in reverse and gunned it. Next thing you know, the fire chief comes out of the water. And uh, he was breathing. Over a minute in the water. <clears throat> Two other firefighters went in the water to go find the woman that was still gone. They found her and got her back in. Two lives saved. The fire chief has no memory of this event. He has no memory of going under, what happened to her while I was under. He only remembers being, once he kind of woke up, he remembers that. He remembers nothing else. These are the heroes of Princeville that we cannot forget. And the challenge we have right now, Patrick, is this is that there are people in Lumberton, there are people in Princeville, there are people in Fair Bluff who have lost everything. And there are the people that can least afford to lose everything because they didn't have much to begin with regarding material goods. But they do have their faith. And, uh, and I just want to thank this church for not forgetting these people. Because the major challenge we have is, do you notice the minute the hurricane left the beaches of Florida and Georgia and Myrtle Beach, the reporters left? Like the whole world revolves around a beach. The minute the beaches were spared from Hurricane Matthew, the CNNs, the MSNBCs, the Foxes, they left. And they forgot the people inland especially the poor people inland who were losing everything, including their life. And sadly, we lost 27 people, 25 due to drowning. But by the way, we didn't lose 29 due to drowning because of the heroic firefighters of Princeville, North Carolina. So I just want to let you know, as governor, um, Thomas Stiff now, my chief of staff. Thomas, please stand up. I want to introduce him. He runs the state of North Carolina. When things go well, I take the credit. When things go bad, <laughs> wouldn't you agree, Thomas? Thomas has just been named chairman of the Matthew Hurricane Recovery Team. And um, his family comes from Rocky Mountain, Kinston area, which also got hit. But I just want to thank, do not forget the people that are suffering. And our major challenge right now is not just food and water and diapers and things of this nature. Our major challenge is going to be finding these people a home and a shelter and maybe rebuilding it in such a way so when the next flood comes, we don't go through this repeat. And the mayor, Bobby Jones, is one of the greatest men I've ever... He came and greeted me and gave me a gift, and his house was underwater. He's absolutely incredible. He, he's my hero, along with the fire chief. So there's another thing we can't forget that I want to briefly talk about, and that is this, is that we're fighting for the basic values of our civilization yes, at this point in time. And there is a tremendous pressure being put on leaders, whether it be church leaders or political leaders or business leaders, to say, let it happen. That's right. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The media elite, the corporate elite, some even religious elite, right. the political elite are saying, let it happen. It's just the way things are going to work is that we're going to redefine the definition of sex or gender. We're going to now let, when a, let a person determine who they are, but not who they are, but what they think they are. And that's not the way God meant it to be. There is a difference between us. 
I respect that difference. I admire that difference. I praise that difference. I thank God for that difference. And sometimes when I'm with my wife, we want to be separate from each other. And sometimes my niece, when she goes to school, she does not want to integrate with another man in a private facility, whether it be a restroom, locker room, or shower. I respect that. So what happened to Thomas Stiff and I about nine months ago was shocking. We had a young man, probably 40 years old, out of Washington, D.C., come visit Thomas and I in the governor's office. And he comes in rather arrogant and a little bit cocky, and he starts pointing his finger at me. And Thomas, by the way, goes, you don't point your finger at the governor. <laughs> but he started saying this. He said, Governor, we're going to make North Carolina the epicenter. We're going to make North Carolina the epicenter of what he called the transgender bathroom rights movement of the United States of America. We're going to make North Carolina the epicenter. And tomorrow, I'm bringing six people in from out of the state to coordinate protest all over the state to get as much, much free media as possible to talk about the rights of people who believe their gender is something else or they like to express their gender as something else. And I'm like going, what are you talking about? And then the third thing he said, and I'll be real blunt with you, he said, Governor, we're going to make you the face of the movement that fights this and is for discrimination. That's what he said to me. That's when Thomas got up and it got pretty tense. And he said, basically, Thomas said to the young man, how dare you even compare this to the civil rights movement? He said, my dad was in the civil rights movement. My granddad was in the civil rights movement. How dare you even compare this to the civil rights movement? I didn't have to say anything else. Thomas stood up for me, stood up for the governor, and stood up for the boys and girls and men and women of North Carolina. Yeah. Now, since then, since then, every single day in the Raleigh News Observer and WREL, they are going after this subject that we had never heard of nine months ago. And I have a lot of people that have come up to me and said the following. I'm about to finish, Pastor. I'll make sure I'm not going. I said the following, Governor, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm with you. I'm behind you. But there was one preacher who stood up and said, I'm with you, Governor. And that was this man right here. And he had the courage to go against some of the religious elite, the political elite, the business elite, and stand up for basic values in North Carolina. And I just want to say God bless you, Patrick, for having the courage and to stand up. And I just want to say I stand with you. Thank you, and God bless each one of you.